Hi, good morning and welcome to my second Victober vlog of this year. Today is a very calm day. I slept in big time, which sometimes is just very needed. I did start listening to a little bit of my current Victober reads. So this is Cousin Phyllis and other stories. So I started listening to the novella in this one, which is Cousin Phyllis. And then I hope to read the other short stories that are in here and I will update you every time I read a short story. Cousin Phyllis is really wonderful so far. We follow a young man who is sent out to live on his own and it's very like a mundane kind of thing. I think he's supposed to be a clerk and then he goes to visit someone and he meets Cousin Phyllis and it's very much like the picture on the cover uh, with how they look. And it's really lovely and soft-hearted so far. And yes, Bella jumped off herself. They are crazy. I don't know why my cats are so crazy this week. I think it's cold now and maybe the cold kind of makes them want to keep warm. So they are like running and reading. It's reading. Yes, my cats are reading. <laughs> They're running and screaming around the house. So yeah, I don't know what's happening there, but I'm glad that Max, our big lazy male cat, is getting some extra exercise because it's such a chore to get him to exercise at all because he just wants to lay down and sleep all day. <laughs> Not relevant. I'm gonna read the first one, which is called... Nora, honestly. The first one is called Lizzie Lee. I'm just lying down, don't feel like getting up. But yesterday evening, I read two stories of uh, Cousin Phyllis. Gosh, these stories, they're domestic. Like, they're domestic dramas, but the drama is so there. Like, a lot of things happen. The first one is about a woman whose husband dies, and then she and her son, her sons, go to Manchester to find her long lost daughter. And that is very heartbreaking. And then the second story is the Manchester marriage in which we follow I think a woman and her mate and her life, her marriages. And it's a beautiful story as well of the position of a domestic worker. I think it's really beautiful. I remember reading other short stories by Elizabeth Gaskell, the one from the Little Black Classics collection. And those I gave five stars. And I think maybe I even love Elizabeth Gaskell more in short story form than I do in novel form. Maybe except for Anton Chekhov, from whom I have read like plays and short stories and I prefer his short stories. There's no other author. So Elizabeth Gaskell, I'm having a wonderful time. Thank you for writing this. <laughs> so let's see what I'm gonna read next. Oh, Lizzie Lee was the first one that I read. And then the man just the marriage. I'm not reading them in order. I never really do that with a collection. I just pick what I think sounds fun. Um, the next one is Morton Hall. Hi, I just finished filming a ginormous book haul. It's over 50 books. It's a little bit embarrassing. But I did start reading more of Cousin Phyllis, which I don't remember. Should have been in this book haul. All right. <laughs> I read the main story, Cousin Phyllis, and I don't really love them as much as I love the other stories. It's much slower, much more a slice of life. It doesn't have the drama, it doesn't really have the plot. It's just, it's beautifully written, of course, because it's Elizabeth Gaskell, so of course it's beautifully written. But I love the other ones more, so I have three stories left, which I don't know when I will read them. I'm kind of all over the place with my reads. But I did start reading another book that is in this pile. It's on the bottom, so I'll put a picture up here. But I started listening or reading and then listening to The Five, which is a book that Ross during the Reading Friends recommended. And this is about the women that were killed by Jack the Ripper. And she said that it really gives a lot of detail about Victorian life. And I would absolutely have to agree with her because I listened to the 
Now I physically read the introduction and then I listened to the first chapter and it gives so much detail to Victorian life that at least I have not really read a lot in Victorian novels because I feel like they're either higher society when it's in London, like Bleak House and things like that, or it is set in a middle class like North and South. Or you have um, more George Eliot, Adam Bede's kind of vibes, uh, male on the floors kind of things where you follow farmers in the countryside and of course uh, Thomas Hardy as well. But you don't really see horrific conditions of the working class in the cities. Um, and you don't really follow them as characters a whole lot because how unromantic is that? But this book does give a lot of details and I think it's so admirable how she found so many details about a woman's life because that's not easy in history because I feel like except for births and marriages not a lot of records were held about women especially not working class women so far I'm really really impressed but it's also a tough read because damn the Victorian era was ruthless my god I'm enjoying it but it's definitely gonna be a slow read and I kind of decided to implement it in my Victorian reading because it gives so much context to the Victorian era right now I'm procrastinating putting all of these back on the shelves and just drinking my tea. Ooh, I could show you a little stationary haul. Okay, so I got this little mug, which I, is it mug? It's like a thermos thing. But usually when I'm working on my computer, I usually let my coffee get cold because I just don't drink it fast enough. So that's why I bought that. And I have some more stationery. So I got these really beautiful sticky notes. I'll show you up close which I find just so cute and I do use them like usually for book club reads and things like that and then I got a set of little notebooks I bought one of them for therapy to keep notes and stuff and I thought might as well just get a set for other things so I have this one off to outer space which I am not gonna use for therapy I think and then you're a star why not use this one for therapy <laughs> then the other one has no text um, which I do really like, the silver foiling. But yeah, let, let, let's be positive for therapy. <laughs> so I have these three. And then I have something that I love using while I'm crafting and that is design paper. So you just get this kind of paper. I haven't even... Oh, I love this one. It's like a watercolor print. Yeah, this is really lovely. And I also really like this. I could really use this for backgrounds, for photos. I used to do that a lot. Not really anymore, but I could, I could do that. Yeah, I'm gonna put all of this away at some point. Definitely at some point. <laughs> It's Friday evening and I'm just in sprints with Petra and Mary and I'm not reading anything Victorian but today I did finish this short story collection and I ended up giving it five stars because every short story was just so good usually you have like one or two favorites and the other ones are a bit meh funnily enough like the title story is my least favorite which has never happened to me before while reading a short story collection i think the manchester marriage is still my favorite but french master is also one i really liked this is about a frenchman who becomes a french tutor to these two sisters and we follow them throughout most of their lifetime and i really like that it's set in different places in Europe, which I haven't seen in Elizabeth Gaskell's books before. So if you have any recommendations of what to read beyond, I guess, Elizabeth Gaskell's major works, which I have now read, then I would love a recommendation. And I'm moving the camera. So I have, I have only a minute left before the sprint starts again, but somehow I am really in the mood for a hot chocolate. I love that, so gonna see if I can make some after the sprints. Hi, it is Sunday and I'm having a very productive Sunday or very Sunday Sunday. I went to the thrift store with my bike, which is quite far. I usually don't go by myself on my bike, but I did today and I got a big bag of red yarn. I'm going to want to use Christmas time. Another thing that I'm gonna want to do <laughs> during Christmas time or I think just during December I want to start doing craft with me sprints. So not just the reading sprints but I would also like to do productivity sprints that help you be creative. Create some time for yourself to just do something silly, do something fun. Of course I will also be crafting. <laughs> um, but reading wise, well I was on my bike. I listened to 
a good chunk or not a good chunk quite a bit of the five i read almost everything from the first woman because the five are of course the five women i have nearly finished part one which is about polly and this is so not what i expected it to be i thought this would be a bit like true crime i don't like i don't love it i just I don't enjoy that kind of gruesome serial killer stuff. It's not for me. That's why I put this off. I was never interested in it when it was hyped. But then when I heard it was about Victorian life, I got way more interested. And it really, really is. It reflects on marriage equality, on gender equality, and how there were big differences within class as well for women and men. The possibility of divorce, of what you could do as a woman when your husband was abusive, when your husband would cheat on you. And if you were a working class woman, basically you had no options. We followed Hello Polly who had no options. She has a really really hard life and I really like the fact that it's debunking the myth of the victims of Jack the Ripper. These women really had a life and were most of them were middle-aged and were mothers so it's so different than what you would usually see in media and i'm just i'm learning so much from this because like i knew the victorian era had two sides like the one side we enjoy now reading about in our books and then the other side which I guess you would call um, the other part of Dickens' novels. But it's even way, way worse. And also, like, I know from books and films that the workhouses were really bad, but I don't think it ever gets into detail why it's so bad. And this book definitely does. And it's just a working house was basically a prison with really, really bad conditions. So that sounds like absolute hell. And then I also finally started The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. And I'm liking the main character a lot. We follow our main character in her early 40s. She is writing a book about queen warriors something like that she, i don't remember the name of the book but she just wants to publish a book and make some money she doesn't really care whether or not her book is good and she tries to wiggle her way into getting it published and we also follow her son and her daughter so far i'm really liking the characters the writing is a bit overwhelming it's very lengthy it's much more lengthy than like dickens or gaskell and i'm not enjoying that i noticed that after every chapter I put it away because it's just it's a lot but I think I'm of course in the introductory phase so that makes a lot of sense I am not a lot for in I am 29 pages in and I wanted to read 60 pages a day starting yesterday so I don't know maybe I should just go downstairs right now and do a little bit of reading I might I don't know what's going on outside um so I said that I was having a typical Sunday so I went to the thrift store. Maybe that's a weird Sunday activity, but I like to go to the thrift store on Sundays because a lot of other things aren't open, but the thrift store is. And I'm baking, so I made a banana bread. Not really because I want banana bread, but because I had leftover bananas that I didn't want to throw away. And I am making something that I really do want to eat, and that is gingerbread cookies, or a kind of gingerbread. I use ginger, nutmeg, and cinnamon, and I made them heart-shaped, which is cute. I really love it. And then I'm going to use some thin white frosting for when they are cooled but they look great i'm gonna taste them once they have cooled down i don't usually make like normal sugar cookies but i don't know i think it's kind of the season for cookies cookies i have been making are usually chocolate chip but somehow that feels like a summer cookie i don't know why now i want to get into the uh, more spicy cookies because i love like cinnamon nutmeg ginger in baking i also put a lot of cinnamon in my banana bread and some walnuts and pecans gonna have a great week with a lot of really nice snacks max is really adorably taking a nap next to me hi max he did not appreciate me coming in <laughs> Uh, I usually close the door to my office because Nora is slowly making her way through my rug. As in that I think there will be nothing left in a year or so because we were so stupid. We thought we would treat ourselves to a fancy rug. We, ne we always had like these shitty IKEA rugs so we got a better rug that was like 100% wool. But if you have cats, do not do it because cats love wool so much that they want to bite it and scratch it and disentangle it so we put it in my office so that i can keep the door closed and then we can maybe save our fancy rug but i forgot it again you can see it has a lot of bites i said but max doesn't do it so i'm gonna let him nap here just i, I need to show you his little paw like let's be really silent oh no i woke him up yes i'm sorry mister Oh, I'm sorry, you missed this little poll. We decided this year for Christmas, we weren't going to do any gifts for each other 
or for ourselves like we're gonna have a no gift Christmas. We are going to give our friends and family gifts, of course, but like not ourselves. We're gonna be true parents because we're gonna give our cats a Christmas gift. Uh, we still have the same cat tree we had when we had two cats, but now we have three and just, it's really not good enough, especially because Max is too big to use any of the sleeping spots. That's why he always sleeps on sofas. He either sleeps on my sofa here or the sofa downstairs, because I don't know if you can see how big Max is. I think you can. He takes up half the sofa. So we want to get a cat tree that is like big enough for our three cats and that is big enough for Max to sleep in because I feel a little bit bad for him. <laughs> Don't really have space downstairs in the living room, but we're gonna make space. And I think we will put the old cat tree in the attic. It's like just a normal room, but we don't really use it very actively, but the cats do often sleep in the attic at night. So it's nice if they will have their own little spot. I think I will read a little bit of the way we live now. I want to say make dinner, but I don't have any dinner. I might order dinner. That's not very Sunday vibes of me, but oh well. few days later and I got a hundred pages into the way we live now but I'm just not feeling it and the writing is just it's too dense it's too many descriptions for my brain right now and maybe it's just because of my brain at the moment but I'm going to DNF this one um, not like forever <laughs> but just for now I'm not gonna force myself to read this big novel because I know that will just not be an enjoyable experience and I just will not love this in a way that I could maybe possibly love it. I put it back on my shelves and if I read it at some other time. I am liking the characters, it's just the writing is really not dwelling with me at the moment. That means that I'm going to conclude my Victober reading for this year here. Even though I did not get to my TBR, I also didn't make that TBR with the intention of reading all the books. I knew that was not going to happen. But even though I didn't read a whole lot for Victober this year, the books that I actually read and finished, I did all really enjoy. I even had a five stars in that respect. I would say I had a successful Victober this year. I do find Victober challenging because reading so many like usually quite dense and challenging classics in one month can be a little bit much. But it does always get me on track to read books that I didn't know about. Like the play that I read on Katie's recommendation. Would never have found that without Katie. I don't know. If I would have read Great Expectations anytime soon, if I didn't have like Ross's prompt for class. And I'm glad that I read it because that was such a surprise to me. And Elizabeth Gaskell's short stories. Elizabeth Gaskell's always a treat. It's strange that I don't call her my favorite author or one of my favorite authors. I just never felt the inkling to do that. But I do always really like all of her writing or most of her books, especially her short stories, I really love. So I think I will 
get an edition probably of her gothic tales because I've read only one or two of them and I think I will really enjoy reading more of it. Enjoyment wise I think I had a successful October. Quantity wise not so much but that is fine that is okay. This one is going back on the shelf and maybe I will give it another try somewhere next year but I'm not gonna force it. I really need to take my time with this one and I also don't want to put myself off of Anthony Trollope because he wrote so much and I think there's much to enjoy. So I'm gonna leave the vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you had a good October as well. If you would like to please share in the comments how your Victober went or how it's still going because I think I'll upload this before the end of the month. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day and I hope to see you in another video. Doei!